This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by lynda.com. What's going on guys? I'm Mark Lintanga from Techno Buffalo and today we'll be talking about iOS 8. We're just going to quickly recap on everything what's new about iOS 8 and see how it differs from iOS 7. Now I've been testing out iOS 8 since the first beta and today iOS 8 is publicly launched so if you have an iPhone 4S and up, iPod Touch 5G, iPad 2 and up, your device is compatible and you can update it via iTunes or through an over the air update. But be sure to back up your device before upgrading though. So what's new in iOS 8? In terms of features there's a lot, but visually not much has changed other than the control center, notification center, and a few icon redesigned throughout the whole OS. But otherwise it looks pretty similar to last year's release. In terms of new features, there's a lot to digest, like widgets and notification center, and new software integrations that'll help third-party apps connect in iOS 8 more easily. Probably the most noticeable one would be the keyboard. iOS 8 features a new keyboard that makes typing easier by suggesting contextually appropriate words to complete your sentences. And another thing that's new is that iOS 8 now allows you to add third-party keyboards, which is really cool. And within the next few weeks or so, we'll be seeing more third-party keyboards from developers that we can download via the App Store. Now popular keyboards like SwiftKey and Swipe should be available via the App Store this week for download and we can't wait to try them out. There's also continuity which essentially connects your iPhone, iPad and Mac together. You can start writing an email on your iPhone and pick up where you left off when you sit down at your Mac or simply browse the web on your Mac and continue the same link on your iPad. You can also answer calls from your iPad or Mac if for example your phone's charging and you're using your Mac you can just answer the call directly on your Mac. Now unfortunately some of these features aren't available just yet, so we'll have to wait until OS 10 Yosemite publicly launches, probably in October. In messages there are tons of new features too, like sending voice messages, videos, and pictures with just a single swipe, and probably the most helpful feature is that you can now do so much more in group messages, like the ability to leave a group message and or renaming a group thread and sharing locations with one another. There's also interactive notifications which lets you reply to texts or take actions on emails, calendars, or reminders without leaving the app you're in. There's also a new app called Health which gives you an easy to read dashboard of your health and fitness data. Now Apple also released HealthKit for developers so that they can integrate their own apps and quickly add all of the data you've collected through the health app. Let's take a quick break from this video and thank our friends over at lynda.com. Lynda.com offers thousands of engaging, easy to follow video tutorials taught by the industry experts to help you learn software, creative, and business skills. Membership starts at only $25 per month and provides unlimited 24-7 access. Learn at your own pace from bite-sized tutorials or comprehensive courses in a ton of different topics, whether that's web design, photography, or 3D animation. Try Lynda.com free for seven days by visiting lynda.com slash technobuffalo. And again, that's lynda.com slash technobuffalo. Now there's also iCloud Drive. Before iCloud Drive even existed, iCloud was only really for backing up your iOS devices and or accessing your iWork documents. Now with iOS 8 and OS 10 Yosemite, you can drag and drop any file you want and access them anywhere, even if you're using a PC. Think of it as Dropbox or Google Drive, but integrated within the whole OS. Now there's also family sharing. Up to six people in your family can share purchases from iTunes, iBooks, and the App Store. You do, however, have to be using the same credit card in your account for this to work. Now, other than sharing purchases from iTunes or the App Store, you can also share photos, calendar events, and even your location if you want. Now, last but not least, there's the new Spotlight search. I'll be honest, I didn't like using Spotlight before iOS 8, but now that iOS 8 can look up apps, songs, news, nearby places, and movies, I can see myself using it a whole lot more. So to wrap things up for you guys, there's really no reason not to upgrade to iOS 8. There are tons of new features that'll make the experience that much better. Anyways, I'm Mark Lansenka from Techno Buffalo. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching this video, and if you guys would like to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below.